Good evening, everyone. We'll open the public hearing on the Newburgh Preparatory Charter School application. The first item on my agenda is um, a review of the Newburgh Preparatory Charter School application, and Mr. Pacella, you'll be doing that? On the process. Okay. Calculations. 
based on the estimated cost, our foundation aid per pupil, based on the output report from the state, $9,997. That's what we receive currently for our current enrollment per student. We don't <coughs> receive the, the total amount of the $14,796 that the state has given us as a tuition rate. So applying those figures, at the 105 kids, at the tuition rate, there's a first year, as I mentioned. The second year, the 155 is their enrollment, and you can see it goes up 50. That's what they're projecting at the 14,000. So just to combine, two-year cost of the taxpayers would be roughly 3.8, a little over $3.8 million. Not until year three would we receive the aid based on the enrollment of year one. So you see we'd only get $1 million. However, we've already spent, have spent $3.8 million combined and then so on all the way through year five. The state assumes a local share cost per student of roughly $4,500 that's borne by the taxpayers. First two years, all of it would. Now this, this graph assumes no increase in the tuition or state aid because as you know, we have not received additional state aid over, over the years. Foundation aid has been flat and it's adjusted by what's called the gap elimination adjustment, either a higher decrease or uh, a lower decrease would represent the total amount of aid that the district would receive. It's not clear yet how that would affect going forward. There's other financial requirements that the district would have to uh, come up with, just like it's a regular private school. It would have to provide transportation if the students live without, outside of the one mile because of the secondary miles population. It would require, be required to give textbooks, software, hardware, and library resources, along with nursing services, and if special ed services are required, the district of residence would be required to offer that too. Now, for additional comments, you can read them to uh, Mr. Ralph Rossi. He's at SUNY uh, Charter School Institute at SUNY uh, New York. Uh, we did, I did contact his office uh, to clarify that this information is correct that we give you because this is completely different than the elementary charter that was proposed earlier in the year. The proposed charter school here, and I'm sure that you'll be spoken to of what their target audience is, isn't dealing with the current enrollment of our students. The current enrollment of our students, if that were the case, we might be able to realize some savings by reducing some of the, the, uh, the teaching staff or assistance or some of the ancillary services that we provide. The target audience for this charter school are new students not currently enrolled during the dropdown. And again, I'm sure that you'll hear about that uh, later. So, I did verify all this information, Mr. Ralph Rossi, along with Ms. Vicki Smith, uh, thank you, at SED, who confirmed with Grant Miller and all the SED state aid departments that that is exactly how uh, the finances are driven. So at this point, Madam President, concludes the presentation. <coughs> Um, we will have public discussion and comment. I have a list here, um, so I'm going to call people by name in the order in which they were received, and then um, if there's anyone else that wants to speak to this, we can go from there. So uh, first, we'll be speaking Mr. Tom Fitzgerald.
In all the discussions I've had with board members and school district personnel, with local organizations, and many people who care deeply about Newburgh, with charter school people, and with all the experience I have in education, I'm afraid that I didn't completely understand how this charter school funding process works. I find that I'm not alone. Today I've spoken to people at the State Education Department's State Aid Office, at the State Education Department's Charter School Office, at the New York State Charter School Association, and at the Center for Educational Innovation in New York City, where I am a consultant and have been for nearly two years. What I found out initially is that no one completely understood how this charter school funding process works in a small city school district and for a school aimed at high school dropouts. We have all learned something today. I have a confession to make because I may have given the impression in the many words I have written and spoken about the Newburgh Preparatory Charter High School over the past year and more, that very little of the cost of such a school for students who have dropped out of high school would come from local taxes. I apologize for that impression. I apologize for my ignorance. But please let me explain. The cost of educating a student in the Newburgh and Large City School District is $14,796. Roughly $9,900 of that comes from per pupil state aid, the state share. Roughly $4,800 comes from local taxpayers, the local share. The local cost for Newburgh Prep for 105 students in the first year is roughly $500,000. This $500,000 plus about $1 million that comes from per pupil state aid for the 105 students, plus a 500,000 New York State Charter School grant over three years is what makes the operation of Newburgh Prep possible. Three quarters of the money is state funding, one quarter is local funding. Another thing we learned today is that it looks like the school district is required in effect to fund our charter school until the state begins to reimburse the district for the state share, and that the reimbursement may not even be 100%. I learned all this today. I never meant to mislead anyone. I wanted as little as possible of the cost of Newburgh Prep to come from the, from the local share. I am deeply disappointed in the details of this funding plan. But as I thought about it today, and I've been thinking about it all day, I realized that much of what I've been saying is still true. The cost of reclaiming the lives of young people, young people who are adrift on our streets, young people who are involved in the drug culture, young people in gangs, young people who turn to crime, young people in prison, young people who have no hope for the future and who are dying on our streets. This is money well spent. Especially when you consider, at least down the road, most of the cost is covered by state funding. Especially since the dropout problem is long standing and generational. If the dropout problem could have been solved easily and without cost, it would have been. Are we to leave things the way they are? We need to educate our kids. If all of us here believe that this is a problem worth solving, and all you need to do is read the newspaper to see that it is, can't we, working together, find a way to make this happen? I've had high hopes of working with the school district to solve this problem. But that means that the school district and the taxpayers who support it have to help us do that. We need that help now for many young people in Newburgh will continue to live without hope and bring up a, a new crop of young people to live without hope. Without hope for the young people, there is no hope for this city. 
How much longer do we accept this? We have come this far in the process. We are on the verge of being adopted, accepted as a charter school by the state of New York. Help us to find a way to make this happen. We need to educate our kids. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fitzgerald. Christopher Ekes. Good evening. Here we are again, talking about a charter school. Thank you for inviting me to speak at this hearing on the Newburgh Preparatory Charter High School. I'm sure the invite was extended because of my professionalism, my dedication to education, and as an elected representative of the residents of this school district. <clears throat> Looking through this 100-page proposal, I feel as if I'm the only person who is speaking on behalf of the 12,000-plus students in this district and their parents, and the taxpayers. Even the school district has given credence to this proposal, though the facts are that charter schools do not perform any better than the equivalent public school. Now, the high number of dropouts from middle schools and high schools throughout the country is a very serious problem. I'm in agreement, we're all in agreement. School districts must take responsibility for this problem and not pass it on to a private entity. With that being said, I have a solution. If this 100-page proposal is such a great idea, then let's institute it in the new burb in large city school district. In this way, we'll be sure that no allotted money will leave the school district, and we as a school district will be fulfilling our obligations. A retired teacher from this school district, who is also a former elected school board member, and then an employee of the Newburgh and Large City School District Board of Ed, has organized this proposal. With this experience, how is it not possible to incorporate this proposal into the school district if we truly believe it's worthwhile. If we can't facilitate this proposal into the present system, then I suggest that there's something wrong with the system. The facilities and the staff already exist here in our school district to blend the base ideas of this proposal with our current acquisitions. We can do this now in the school district without charging our already overburdened taxpayers. <clears throat> From my experience in teaching in the classroom today at NFA, I can tell you that there are absolutely no resources that can be wasted or spent friv frivolously throughout this school district. None. I find it amazing that the school district, page 60, in this proposal, has endorsed the idea of giving away taxpayers' money and relinquishing their responsibility to educate the Newburgh community. Let's take a look at history a little bit. In just the past two years alone, over $2 billion was cut from our education aid by our current state legislators. $2 billion. If you recall, $800 million was added back into the system this past year but it initially appeared in the form of competitive grants for school districts. Thank heavens, cooler heads prevailed, and only 200 of the 800 million was designated as competitive grants. Thank heavens. But you get the idea of where our current state legislature is going with educational aid. The formation of a charter school in Newburgh creates more competition for that aid from that dwindling amount. So we cannot say that the proposed formation of this charter school with another administration, another building, another faculty, and another staff won't cost this district money. It will. The school district has the facilities. It has the programs. 
It has the people currently in the system. Any student who's willing to learn has the opportunities and the alternative schooling options in our school district already. But let's be a little more optimistic and imagine that this proposal has some promising aspects to it. I'm being positive here. Are you guaranteeing that the successful students currently in our school system won't want to drop out and to uh, drop out of our current schools, that is, to go to this proposed school? Do we have any guarantees of that? This will be the beginning of a disaster for this school district. And I've read the arguments. Okay, the charter school has requirements so that not just any dropout can enroll and attend even if they wanted to. So mind you, we're not addressing all of the dropouts. Only certain ones that qualify. I assure you, our students are a lot brighter than they are giving credit for. Does anyone here want to take responsibility for supporting the start of the downfall of the Newburgh school system? I'm sure no one does. Again, if this is such a great idea, then let's blend this proposal into the Newburgh Enlarged City School District not have to pay for something new and expensive. Let's accept our responsibility as a public school district, keep our money, and keep our children in our schools. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ekus. Nicholas Valentine? Good evening to everyone, the members of the board, the staff of the school system. Thank you for allowing me to speak here tonight. Uh, the last time uh, the one subject of charter schools came up, I never got even a notification, so my, my apologies for not attending a meeting that I didn't even know I was supposed to attend. Uh, but that's okay, because I'll be back when the Hudson Scholars Charter School comes up again through the state and back in front of you for another public hearing. We'll be doing probably a lot of these public hearings. But let's talk a little bit about the public hearing tonight and the proposed charter school for dropouts. Uh, I offered my support to Tom Fitzgerald when he first had a public hearing on this proposed school. And I did it for a variety of reasons. The dropout rate is one of the things that really causes the crime and the overall <coughs> problems and perceptions in the city of Newburgh. And as the former mayor of the city of Newburgh, there wasn't a meeting that I did not attend as mayor that we did not hear those comments. What are you going to do about the kids? What are you going to do about these kids on the street? What are you going to do about the ones that have dropped out? Of course, my answer always was, I'm not part of the school system. I'm part of the municipal government, but not the school system. We have here a gentleman and a board that have thought very, very sincerely about what to do about these dropouts, how to save some of them. Comment made a couple of moments ago about kids will drop out so they can go to this school is about as far-fetched as I can imagine. That one, you've got to come up with a better argument than that. Is there a cost? Yes. There's always a cost. But what is the end result? If you're able to save 105 students who have dropped out of school and get them to get a, a high school qualified education, what is that overall cost to the city, to its residents, to crime statistics, to everything that has a ripple effect in this most difficult city? When I agreed to chair and be ahead of the Hudson Scholars Charter School, it was not to take students away from the overall school system. It was to offer something different and more intense than what you 
can do as both a board and as a school system being responsible for over 11,000 students. You can't do that. Physically, you can't do it. And that's okay, because your job is to take care of everyone. The charter schools step up and offer something that is more intense, longer days, greater uh, accountability. And they do that because they're dealing with smaller numbers. So let's not look at just the numbers. Cost and money, and I've done enough budgets and cut enough people in their jobs in the city of Newburgh to know what it is to deal with the bottom line of what your budget is. But I believe what Tom is doing is trying to actually save money in the overall effect of what these residents will be when they don't have a job and they don't have an education, and the only thing left for them is either crime, drugs, or all of the above, and then they turn out to be a statistic. But why is there one more murder? Why is there one more stabbing? That's the overall money of what a municipality looks at. Something else too, and it's a bit of an aside, but it's a good barometer. We have in the city of Newburgh, I say most of the time and all of the time, that we are blessed with two very small, not charter schools, and not really parochial schools, but special schools in San Miguel and Nora Cronin. Students of 13, 15, 18 a class. Hardly a huge impact to the overall numbers of the Board of Education. But they are paid, they get the money, they get the transportation, they get the vouchers, they get everything. But when you look at those 15 and 16 young boys in San Miguel and 15, 18 girls in Nora Cronin and see what they accomplish in fourth and then fifth, sixth, seventh, and then eighth grade, what is their impact to when they go to NFA and become role models for others? students that are there because of the quality of the education that they got. They didn't come and say, we're doing this because you're not doing it. They came because they said they could offer something more intense and something that these children would never ever get. I truly believe that that's what Tom's goal is, to save some of these young people. Not necessarily to figure out that the dollar sign is the reason whether, whether or not we attempt it. That's really crucial right now. And the reason I have such a passion for what I'm trying to do is for those same reasons. To try to get some young people that either don't fit in or can't do the job equal to the other children in their class, and they fall through the cracks, and then they become the statistic that doesn't measure up in fourth grade and fifth grade and sixth grade, and on and on and on. I think that this school system, that the municipalities of Newburgh and the town of Newburgh and the town of New Windsor can make this work for everybody's good, and especially for the good of the students, that without it would just be a failure for the rest of their life. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Valentine. I apologize, I can't read the next name. I think it's uh, Cole from Team Newberg and Catholic Charities. Martin <laughs> <laughs> I think I signed the wrong thing. But thank, I you, want to say, <laughs> thank you, Mr. Colony. I would like to say one thing. <laughs> one thing I'd just like to say. One thing I'd like to say sitting down and listening is that 
The one thing that is brought up is the most important thing I think this provides, and that's hope. It's hope for people who otherwise didn't take advantage of an opportunity, had an opportunity to take it away. But they're still our kids. They're still in our community. And I want to make this very brief. What it does is it provides hope. It provides hope for these kids. It provides hope for me as an adult to say that this could be a better foundation for our town. And this could be something that can complement the existing services that are here that are doing a great job. It's not a threat to anybody. And it's not a cost, it's an investment. And here's the, the catch. I don't live in New York. In a heartbeat, I'd be willing to invest in a child anyway, in a young man anyway. In a heartbeat, I'd be willing to do that. And I would just ask people to consider that. And that's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Thank you. Medical Leave Act 
said she could have the time off. And then when she was ready to go back to school to teach, she was told that she should really take the rest of the year off because it would be better for the children. And then June came, and this is after teaching at the school for 10 years and having a stellar record there. She was told that her services would not be required for the next year. It's an abomination and she had no recourse. That is what can happen to a private school, a charter school. And it is something that is not how teachers should be treated. We also have a problem in this country with teachers who have less than five years of experience in public schools, who end up leaving the profession very quickly because it becomes difficult, it's not that they expect it, and it's too hard. If this happens with these uh, teachers in charter schools, it is the same situation and also very difficult for them. But it leads to a lack of continuity and an education that will not be as good as we can provide in the public school system. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Kenneth Lewis. You can help me out with the last one. June. June. Kenneth Lewis June. Good evening. <clears throat> I'm not a politician. I'm not. Politician's gone. Uh, I'm not some guy off the street. I'm a parent. And I thought it would be important that I come down and just kind of say a few words because it's interesting that I hear the word charter school and um, I hear people talking about how teachers aren't going to have opportunities, how administrators aren't going to have opportunities, and how the board isn't going to have an opportunity. I disagree. I think the board has a great opportunity here to set a standard. And the standard is, is that you have the power to change. You have the power to set the value and the bar higher. I don't want to take anything away from my own children who've gone to schools here in Newburgh, uh, Foster Town and Gardner Town, excuse me, elementary school, and off to South Junior High School. I remember a funny story, my, my daughter telling me that she was going to go to South, and she was afraid. When she went to South after her eighth grade year, she told me it was the best experience that she ever had. So I'm not here to disrespect public education at any cost. Uh, I remember when my eldest daughter went off to NFA. She wasn't afraid. She was, she was an honor student. She graduated last year. My youngest daughter is now at NFA. She is also an honor student. I'm not here for them. I'm here for the disenfranchised. I'm here for those kids who are black, who are white, who are Latino, who are Asian, who are new to the art community, who need an opportunity. And I think that if we don't take an honest look, not a dollar look, not a cost look, an honest look, and look at the folks that actually need our help, then hey, we might as well chuck it up now, put bars on our doors, bars on our windows, because that's going to be our reality. We need to create what someone said earlier, hope. Hope is created when those who can give, give something. And the something that the board can give is an honest look to this. I think Tom's work, work is really worthwhile. We really need to take an honest look at it because 10 years from now, I can tell you right now, I'm not gonna be a new bird, but someone else will. And they need to know that it was our legacy as members of this community that we made a choice. And that choice is a charter school. If it's going to help those who are poor and disenfranchised, then it's up to us. But if it's not, then again, we need to take that honest look. Uh, crime, 
uh, students dropping out. If they don't have any opportunities, they can't go into the military, they can't get a trade. That's the old world economy. It's catching up to us. So as a board <coughs> and as a community, we have an obligation to look out for those we leave behind. 10 years from now, what will your legacy say for you? You that sit here today, what will that look like? All the politicians are going to be gone, and the members of the community will have to stand and rise. It's the truth. If they can't get a job at ShopRite, can't get a job at McDonald's, what are, we, what are they left to do? Crime's an easy way out, but I think in education, is something that we all have a responsibility as a community to give our children. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Jim. Ramon Vega. Buenas tardes. Good evening to everyone. My name is Ramon Vega. I'm an educator by choice. What a political leader. I choose to work on behalf of the Uber Prescott High School because I'm interested in the community and the school board. I am a chairperson. school system is because they did not succeed there. They do not want to go back. They deserve a special program, a new opportunity. And that's what the charter school will provide. I have prior experience with high school dropouts. Study center, vocational, academic, and we serve all these kids from 16 to 21. I did work with the job club program. The school <coughs> offers special education services for these kids, and the kids did not leave high school purposely. They did not drop out from high school just because they had a special program. They left in high school school that we are proposing is a special one to deal with this case. I am a mature person, but I keep a rest of the times and the trends. Back in 1995, when I was doing my doctor's degree at the University of Bridgeport in Connecticut, we spoke We want to give Newberg High School dropout kids a second opportunity. We're asking you to give us the first opportunity to help these kids. Not only the kids, but also their families and their communities. We want the opportunity to rescue some kids, mold the kids' lives, 
change their lives and save some lives in a special school setting that will be structured, caring, and goes through it. We can't do that without your support to our child's schools. We offer a select group of scholars with a diversified educational background in education and education leadership business specialties in marketing, accounting, and finance, social sciences, sociology, psychology, law, higher education. We have a combined work experience of approximately 215 years. We can make the school success a reality. We cannot be wrong about child school. We can't be wrong but charter school and the benefit that will bring to the community and the kids. We offer 48 years of classroom experience, 39 years of administration and supervision of education and school services, 80 years of experience in social services, and 27 years of experience in law-related services. We are ready to make a difference. We are driven to succeed and to make the school a reality for a community in need. Give us the opportunity to open <coughs> the Newberg Prep Charter High School. Many kids, their families, and the community will be thankful. Newberg City is known for its rich history. We want to add one other event to city history by bringing the first Charter High School to Newberg City and Orange County. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to address you all. I'm hoping that you come to visit us when we open the school. Nuestra escuela es su escuela. Our school is your school.
And although I support their efforts, and I will continue to do so, and I will continue to work with them, I also have to ask, how much longer should we wait? How many more children have to drop out of school? So what I propose is let's not wait anymore. Let's try something new and different. But while we're trying this new thing, let's also work in this school district to put this charter school out of business. <laughs> if we do our job, mm -hmm. he wouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. And I think Tom Fitzgerald would be the first one applauding <laughs> to make this charter school unnecessary. So the Boys and Girls Club would like to offer its support for this charter school application. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. White. Danette Anafrio? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm afraid I might not be as fluent as uh, the people that um, have spoken before me this name with their fair statement. It's going to speak, but when I heard uh, a county legislator say that charter schools are not producing quality kids, um, I have to stand up. Um, I'm a consultant. I evaluate programs. I put programs in. I used to work in this district. Um, my specialty is at-risk kids. But the first thing that I look at when I support something is whether it works. Um, so Tom, who you know worked for this school district, was on this school board, um, First of all, I want to say this man has volunteered a huge amount of time and will be volunteering for a full year without pay um, to make sure that this school works. Uh, and there aren't too many people in the city, I think, that would volunteer to do that. So I think you really... <laughs> the school that is being proposed is based on a, the cornerstone of it is a PICS model. Uh, go online, do PICS model and charter schools and it will pop up. The evaluation on this, on this model shows nine points up above um, the statewide norm uh, for ELA, English, and, and he was 19 points in math above what the state is, is getting from other schools with the improvements that have been made in this. So I think we need to look at what works and what doesn't work. Um, I remember shopping in this school district, or in, this, in Newburgh when I was a kid. I watched this city deteriorate. We're not gonna turn around and change your tax base so that you can get higher taxes paid into this school district until we start to turn it around. One of the things that's proposed for this, for the charter school, is that they also, once they have enough credit, they also will be doing internships. We want them in the community. We want them to start rebuilding the community. And if they're disenfranchised, they will stay that way. We want to turn them into productive citizens. We want to turn them into having a career. And we have the college on, on board, and which will help these kids be able to work so that they're college ready. So we're taking kids off of the street and putting them in college and at work. So that's what we're really looking to do. Um, the, the model is a uh, teacher compensation um, model. So the next thing would be, okay, do the teachers like it? Because they're used to unions. We have, we have uh, retired teachers that want to help with this piece. So anyway, I looked again at the evaluation, and again, it's online. They like getting an incentive when they perform and their kids perform. So please go online, it's in black and white, it's an independent valuation. Um, the other thing is, and I think Kevin White really uh, hit on the head, you're paying for these kids anyway. You're paying for them in social services. You're paying for them in institutions. You're paying for them in other programs reducing their risk or getting them on board. For $4,800 in local money per kid, that's cheaper than what you'll pay for otherwise. So I want you to think about it, because this is an investment. Okay, 
Those are all of the people that I've had to sign up, but we have five minutes. Yes, five minutes. So at this time, since we have heard from everyone that has signed up, anyone that would like to make a public comment on this charter school, please step to the podium and give your name. My name is Ed Kennedy. I live in Newburgh. I've been teaching here for 25 years. I love the idea of doing something about the uh, high dropout rate. And when I heard that there wasn't going to be any uh, tax burden or increased tax burden, or we weren't going to take any money away from our school district, I was even more for it. But then when I heard tonight that there was going to be something coming away from our school district, I got a little worried. So, uh, right now, I'm all for it if we're not going to be losing anything from, we're not going to be taking any away from our school district. But if we are going to be taking something away from our school district, Tom, I'm sorry, I can't be for this. We have to find some other way to get some money for this. We have, we, right now, we can't take money away from this school district. We've got to find some other way. We can't raise We've got that 2% thing right now, that we got right now going on. We're stuck, you know, when you said, well, we're, you're gonna pay for it some other way, we can't. We have a law that we have to go by, unless we're gonna figure out a way to raise it up to that 60% thing, the whole community wants to get behind it, and I'm there, let's go, let's go for the 60%, let's get everybody behind it, let's go for the 60%, everybody wants to get in the 60%, Let's go, get everybody behind it. Tom, you want to get everybody, the whole community to do it? Everybody wants to get in it. Boys and Girls Club, everybody, let's all go for it. Mayor, get the city behind it. Everybody wants to do it, let's all do that. You want to get everybody in it, let's do it. I'll do that. You get everybody to do that. We all get behind it, we'll do that. Then let's go do it that way. But if we can't get that money, we can't do it. We gotta get the money, and we gotta get it done that way. Otherwise, this is not something that we can afford to do. I'm sorry, you gotta get the money. You can't take away from the present staff and the present schools and everything else that we gotta get done. And that's, I'd love to get this done. I'll, I'll help you any way I can to raise the money. I'll look for grants, do anything that I can, because this looks like, sounds like a great thing. I'm tired of seeing the kids have to walk up and down the street for 25 years. It's not just been 12 years. It's 25 years that this has been going on. So uh, we really gotta get something, do something about it. And well, he was saying something, do something in the schools. Yes, we gotta do something about it. It's gotta stop. But we, we, can't, we can't do it without money to do it. We need the money. We've gotta get the money. We've gotta be done. So if everybody wants to get together and vote for the, the 60%, let's do it. That's all I gotta say. Thank you, Mr. Kennedy. Good evening. Uh, my name is Catherine Gadboyce, and I, um, <clears throat> I see this kind of like a gem. I see that it has different facets, and I want to present a facet that hasn't been presented here tonight yet. Um, I remember a time that I didn't pay attention in my earlier years of school and I missed some really basic things. And because of that, I flunked out of a college class because I didn't have the things that I needed, the tools that I needed and the understanding that I needed to go on at that point where I was at that time in my life. I uh, would like to present the aspect, the, the facet of um, volunteers being able to work under the teachers that are being paid so that they're accountable and they're doing the right thing and they have the right supervision, what, you know, whatever works and however it can be done. Um, but that's what I'm interested in because I have a real heart for those people who, uh, for whatever reason, they drop out. And uh, I'd be willing to do my part and I think that that uh, 
we had talked about before at the first meeting somewhat, and I think that that would also, uh, it could be hand in hand with the public schools also, uh, that they would be able to see this, and maybe it would be encouraging, you know, for more public schools to get volunteers to work with the kids that are struggling. Uh, and that's Thank you, Ms. Boyce. I went to Gardner Town School, and then I went to Winona Lake School, and then I went to South Junior, and then I went to NFA, and then I stopped because I stayed in NFA for 30 years, where I taught. I taught history, and I'm also a resident and taxpayer of the city of Newburgh. In the last five years, three of my former students have died, gunned down, on the streets of Newburgh. It still makes me weep and sick to my stomach every time I think of it. Chris Ekus, whom I greatly admire as a teacher, who is a terrific physics communicator, said when he gave his remarks, <coughs> any student in the Newburgh district who is willing to learn has the opportunity to do so. I fear that this is a wish, a very heartfelt wish, wishing on a star and imagining by wishing we'll make it so. But if you can't read, you can't succeed. How often did Judy and Tom and Sue and I wrestle with that stark reality? Few of my teaching experiences were more painful than witnessing the excruciating humiliation engulfing a 17-year-old, six-foot-tall young man in a classroom. What made him writhe and seethe in frustration? It was the invincible and merciless enemy he faced. The inscrutable letters that glared menacingly from the textbook's pages. Was it any wonder he dropped out? <clears throat> How did that happen? How did he reach 10th grade without the most basic reading skills? Right. We can't afford to perpetuate this curse on the hundreds of students whom we lose each year. Tonight, I want to remind us all that we have come together. We have come together to confront the daunting reality that snatches the hope and the life from this community. And I am grateful to all of you for coming here and finding the time to do it. As educators and leaders of this school district, we owe our help to those students who seem to have already given up. <coughs> given up on NFA, on us as parents, on us as educators, on the value of education at all, and most terrifyingly, on those students who have given up on themselves. We need to try something different. And Newburgh Prep seems to offer something different with innovative and iconoclastic methods, some of them scary to those of us who are stodgy old teachers, <laughs> to lure these lives back from the precipice of despair to hope offered by learning. Newburgh Prep encourages us all to enlist <coughs> the support of an entire community, now shocked and hopefully animated by the tragic waste of too many young lives. Newburgh Prep may help us offer an escape from a dead-end future. Our situation is desperate. I urge all of us, you and I, to search our consciences and to realize that this is not a matter that divides us into rival sides. That's the curse of Newburgh, isn't it? 
This is a matter that brings us together on a priceless mission to save lives. Thanks. Good evening, my name is Jean Daly, and I'm speaking as a taxpayer. First of all, I'd like to tell Tom, as from one educator to another, I truly respect all the work that he's done on his proposal. But I think to myself, if we can get the parents of these disenfranchised students to commit to the rigors of the proposed charter school, we need to ask, how can we get them to make the same commitment to our public school? These students have all the choices and opportunities available to them in our public school already. We've already lost resources, good teachers, good teaching assistants, other personnel due to budgetary constraints. To drain the district of more resources is not in the best interest of the 12,000 or so students who make sacrifices to come to school every day and take advantage of the magnificent programs that exist. Instead of recreating the wheel, let us support our school with community and parental support so that all students can succeed. Thank you. Johnny, maybe in the fourth or fifth grade, and, and Ms. Stewart says, Johnny, would you please read the first paragraph on page 10? Johnny doesn't know how to read. And it's a known fact that rather than have anyone know he can't read, he acts up and gets thrown out of class. Okay? I do some volunteer work at the Newburgh Ministry, and there are people who come in there asking to have their letters read to them because they do not know how to read. So I challenge the school board and the school administrators, you must do something about reading and maybe we wouldn't have the dropouts. I also believe, don't leave uh, President Bush's program, no, no Child Left Behind, they, they recommend reading from 16 weeks on. We need to reach out to every church, every <coughs> minister in the, in the area to talk to their people about reading to their children. If not 16 <coughs> weeks, at least six months, the child is sitting up, they can hold a book. And then maybe when, maybe when they get to kindergarten or pre-K, they are ready to learn, if they haven't already learned how to read. That's my two cents. Thank you. Thank you. going on that seems to have been going on 
And I wonder why, evidently, the board doesn't know what's going on. And the reason why I say that is because with the high dropout rate that we have in the city of Newburgh, and it has not just started, it's been for quite a while, I find myself asking the question, why is it that the board evidently seems not to realize that this has happened? It didn't just start. I find myself asking the question, and I'm, I'm quite sure we know, what happens to a dream deferred? It dries up, like a raisin in the sun. I feel one of the major problems going on, because of, I don't feel we have enough teachers within our school system who can really relate and identify with the children within the school system. That's a fact. We have a large minority rate within the school system. How many minority school teachers do we have? We have a lot of children growing up in households where there is no father. There's a a lot of rage going on inside of a lot of the children. But if you have teachers within that school system who can relate and identify with what's going on with those youth, I think we would begin to see a turnaround. I don't know how many minority students are employed in the Newburgh School District, but I don't think, comparatively to the amount of minority students you have, I don't think that it adds up. And whether we like it or not, if I didn't grow up in your environment, I don't know how to relate to you. And it truthfully, it's not a, a black-white thing, it's a wrong versus right thing. And a lot of times people do not want to acknowledge that they don't know what to do. And I can understand the frustration that's in existence probably within a lot of the school teachers' minds. But I think the, one of the bottom line things we have to do, I am in support of this, but I would also like to see changes within our school district. And maybe at some point in time, we will find that the need for this will be eradicated and we can go back to just having school. But until then, we cannot afford the cost factor involved with what's going on with our dropouts, the children who are dropouts. So either we end up paying now, or we're gonna pay later. That's the bottom line, thank you. Thank you. Are there any other public comments on? Yes. Okay. I'm Frances Cott. I have a, uh, I've taught all my life in various ways. I'm basically a dance teacher. So it's different than teaching uh, in a school system. I've also taught in some private progressive schools. And I was on the Summer Hill Society board in this country. In case you don't, not familiar with that, that was a school in England that still exists that was set up with no compulsory classes. And at one point, I actually shipped my daughter to England to go there for a year. Because I felt that she was not a learning problem at that point, but I felt committed to that kind of it freedom and choice for children. <coughs> now I just wanted to share some experiences that I would hope could be paid attention to in whichever way you decide to go, whether you do the charter school or you don't. I spent over 50 years in Rockland County. I'm now 88 and a half years old and I have been involved in raising my child, our children, very heavily, 
And so I, I, I've been involved raising seven children, seven people. And um, I did it in North Rockland School District. One of my grandchildren, who had, didn't have a problem reading or in the usual academic issues, balked and refused to go get on the school bus. And I was literally faced with being brought into family court. And I put a stop to it by talking to the superintendent of the school district. And we agreed. They had started in North Rockland a school called 11th, 12th grade Regents Plus. And that school was addressing the dropout problem. They hired a man who is commuting to Rockland from Kingston, who is a psychologist, to direct the school. And I just wanted to put these ideas out that a multi-pronged approach has <coughs> value. And that school was very successful. My grandson, who wasn't going to get on the school bus, has now graduated from New Paltz College and is doing very well with a degree in literature, chooses not to teach after he thought he wanted to teach, but he's also a musician and he, uh, he's got a technical approach to sound and he's working and he's doing very well and very independently. And I put it down to Bob Tolman, who was directing that school. I would like to point something out that I pointed out the last time before board elections took place because I think it's an extremely important issue in Newburgh. And it's and one, I think, a probably an important reason that the school district is so frustrated. And that is, in my family, I had unfortunately watched one of my children go from a brilliant child who could read before she was five to somebody who stopped speaking and looked completely autistic. And I discovered through much uh, travail that she had dangerously high head poisoning that she had gotten when she went to school in Boston. And Newburgh is polluted, extremely polluted. And I think you must pay attention to the lead content in your students' bodies. It's simple. There's a hair analysis that could be done on each child. He's shaking his head yes. I, that's how we originally found it in her. And I was told to put her in a mental hospital and forget about her. And she's brilliant. All because of lead poisoning. Newberg has real estate here that is totally polluted. It's been in the newspapers. I don't have to investigate it myself. So I would like to share all that. If anybody wants me to come to meetings about this, I'd be willing to share more. Thank you, Mrs. Taylor. I'm sorry, what's your name, sir? Elliot Walker. Thank you. Can you pick the mic up and speak in a little time? As I said, I didn't expect to speak tonight at all, but after the hit and run by our representative, I feel that I need to address a couple of things. Um, I'm a product of an alternative school in Brooklyn when I was younger, and it attests to the success that could happen when removed from a public school system someone who's going to drop out, and, uh, and here I am uh, today. But the thing that I wanted to, uh, to address with uh, Mr. Yukis was that we tried in this district several times to do an alternative school for at-risk adolescents, and had been unsuccessful. Uh, we had the Alternative Center for Education, ACE, uh, which was around when I, when I first began working in this district. Uh, followed by another program at West Street School not so long ago that also was not a success. Uh, and then the program that was at the uh, Stewart Airport, um, 
So you, it also seems to have expanded. It's difficult for a school district to conduct an alternative school, or in this case, would be a charter school, because of the bureaucracy and because of all the, the different political things that happen within the school district. It limits our ability to, uh, to, to do the education. do it successfully. And I think that's, that's my point, that we have tried it to do very unsuccessfully. We need to give this one a try. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Lopez. Is there anyone else that would like to make a public comment before we adjourn the public hearing? Mr. Pasella? I just want to clarify a couple comments that were made um, by Mr. Valentine. He, he mentioned the San Miguel and Nora Cronin. Uh, they do get funds, that is correct. However, they are tuition students that are not paid by the school district. They are tuition based and they look for benefactors. Um, they are similar to Sacred Heart St. Joseph School um, where the parents pay tuition. We are obligated as a district to pay for transportation, nursing services, special ed services because they are in our district and that's New York State law, but we do not pay tuition payments to San Miguel, nor Cronin, nor any other school, private school, or public, uh, non-public, or uh, charter school in this district. And I think another misconception is that this board does not decide if this charter passes or not. This is a decision made by State Education Department. This is merely a hearing to hear your comments. Thank you, Mr. Pasella. There's no one else that would like to speak. I will adjourn the public hearing on the Newburgh Preparatory Charter School application. Thank you all for being here and for your comments.